Adonis Creed. You don't remember me, huh? What happened with you two? We was like brothers. I got some unfinished business. Got to be talking about Dane. I'm coming for everything. You threatening me? Let go of whatever was and walk into what is. Creed 3. Rated PG-13. Only in theaters March 3rd. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Desert Diamond Arena here in beautiful Glendale, Arizona. This is Boxing. This is Top Rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum and brought to you in part by Boost Mobile. Money is power by AutoZone. Get in the zone. And by Creed 3, starring Michael B. Jordan, only in theaters March 3rd. It all goes down Friday, February 3rd from here in the desert in beautiful Glendale, Arizona. And man, do we have a stacked card as we continue on in 2023. Top Rank's card this weekend is absolutely stacked, and you can tell by all the gentlemen sitting with me on stage, we are going to have a great night of fights. Uh, we have, we're being headlined by the WBO Junior Lightweight title, Emmanuel Navarrete and Liam Wilson sitting on either side of me. We'll get to our main event uh, in just a few minutes, but I want to start uh, on my right, your left, Richard Torres Jr. Before we get into anything, brother, uh, I have to pull out this hardware behind me because you have been voted on by the fans in the sport of boxing uh, as the 2022 fighter to watch. So congratulations. Before we get into it, that is for you. Voted on by the fans. I know you didn't know that was coming, but congrats. Appreciate yeah, with that uh, comes the opportunity to officially shave the mustache. <laughs> No, I'm keeping this for a while. Yeah, I would keep it for a while, too. Listen, hey, camp for this fight was held uh, half at your home, your home camp, and also at the Olympic training facility. Talk about that. Yeah, I, I switched it up a little bit. You know, I have some really good coaches at the Olympic Training Center, Billy Walsh, who's an Olympic head coach, and then my dad, who uh, communicate really well. And uh, being up in that altitude, getting some training with a lot of other elite guys, there's nothing like it, you know. And so being able to be there and uh, get conditioned was really great. What does this mean to you? Because this, this sort of came out of the blue for me as well. I just walked in and they said, hey, you're presenting Torres with an award, uh, fighter to watch, voted on by the fans. What's it mean in your young career to know that uh, boxing fans are taking notice of, of what you're accomplishing? And, uh, you know, it's a cool thing. You know, it, if, it feels like what I'm doing right now and the sacrifices I'm making and the, the times in the gym where there's no one there watching, it's just me and my dad. And you kind of wonder if it's all worth it. It kind of feels like it's starting to pay dividends a little bit, you know. And I, from the Olympics to now, you always have these these jumps, you know, from going from like a junior to youth, from a youth to elite, from elite into the pros. And it's it's just letting me know that I'm on the right track. And so I'm really appreciative of it. I was reading a couple of your past interviews getting ready for today, and the word stoic came out of your mouth a little bit. And you said you're reading a little bit more, you're journaling more. Uh, how does that keep you uh, focused outside of the ring? Yeah, you know, I've read three books this fight camp. I read uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, uh, The Symposium by Plato, and I'm uh, finishing up uh, Letters of the Stoic by Seneca. And um, it's just, it helps me know. Like, one of the questions is always, why are you a boxer? And Meditations kind of speaks on saying, a bee doesn't uh, wonder why it makes honey. A tree doesn't wonder why it makes fruit. A boxer shouldn't wonder why he's a boxer. I'm a boxer. I'm here. I'm meant to do this. And uh, meditation taught me that. I love it. And uh, before we move on, dance class, too, I, I read. Uh, yeah. Listen, as a former Broadway guy myself, I'm impressed. You said you started to uh, like what you're seeing there, and you sort of took a book out of Lomachenko's playbook a little bit. Yeah, trying to. You know, I'm in the contemporary now, so I'm, I'm trying my hardest. I, I did sign up for a choir class. I don't know if they'll accept me, but I'm... I'm, I'm no, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, probably. yeah, I don't think so. Listen, congratulations on the award. Keep, uh, keep focused. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, honored to have you here on the card with us in Arizona this weekend. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Emiliano Fernando Vargas to my left. I, I would say you're the best looking guy up here. Sorry, fellas. Uh, always bringing the A game. Uh, always representing. Second fight with top rank now coming off a highlight knockout in your last bout. Now that you're here in the swing of things, how you feeling? No, oh, um, I mean, this is uh, obviously blessed to be here. This is another opportunity to uh, showcase my skills. I'm excited. Uh, the Arizona fans, there's nothing like Arizona fans. I know my father fought down here and uh, just amazing fans. So I can't wait to feel that, that emotion and uh, walking down here, seeing the ring, 
uh, well, the stadium, and, and I'm just I'm just pumped. I'm ready to go. I had a phenomenal training camp, like we always do, and uh, you know I'm ready, man. I'm ready for 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 another statement victory. Always ready. Uh, now that you've sort of gotten into the flow of top rank life, top rank has a great young stable of fighters. Uh, have you been embraced in that community? Because we see it fight after fight with our top rank cards, guys coming out even uh, to fights that they're not even on the card, sitting ringside, supporting each other. How has that been for you now a part of the top rank family? No, yeah, this is uh, an amazing promotional company, especially too, there's so many great young, uh, I mean, this card is stacked. This card is stacked, there's so much talent here and um, I'm excited to you know, do my work and then enjoy uh, some great fights that night too. Have you set any specific goals for 2023? Uh, prospect of the year. I know uh, there's there's a lot of other great candidates, but uh, I just think you know um, fight by fight we're gonna keep on putting on performances and not just that, man. I work too hard. I work too hard. Listen, it's gonna be a great weekend. Thanks for spending time with us today. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Honored to be with you here. Uh, next up, Eduardo Ayala and Nico Ali Walsh will be facing each other. And Eduardo, I want to start with you. We're fighting uh, in your backyard, brother, on ESPN. How's it feel? Man, well, first and foremost, I want to thank, you know, the top rank promotions and the LE fam family for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it feels amazing, man. I really thought this was going to be, you know, in Madison Square or Vegas, you know. When they told me it was going to be in Arizona, it was, you know, some weight was, you know, taking off my, my shoulders. But, you know, it's, it's just amazing being here, honestly. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to be here. Uh, a little, you say weight taken off your shoulders, but I would expect maybe a little bit more pressure put on your shoulders. Has your phone been blown up by family and friends asking for tickets? And if so, have you handed that off to an assistant or your mom or dad to help with that? Because I can imagine the phone must be ringing. Yeah, well, I mean, luckily I have a great support system. Um, you know, I really don't really have to do much. Uh, everybody just kind of just goes on my uh, you know, social media, and they're, they're ready to go once I announce the fight. And they're really, really, uh, you know, great fans out here. And um, when they hear we got an Arizona fighter out here, they come out, you know. It's uh, big that you mentioned family, because I think for, for most of us, family is everything. And, and Nico, I want to turn to you. Uh, here we are again, your, your eighth professional fight now. And uh, he, he hinted at family. How important has family been for you along this ride? Um... Family is everything to me. Um, I, I don't feel like people really know my family or talk about them enough, but uh, family is everything. And, and it's not just my grandfather, of course, because that's what everyone knows. But um, my parents, everybody, they, they help me get to where I'm at. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Talk about your relationship. I wrote down uh, Kay Karoma. He's been with you now for a couple of fights. Uh, the good, bad, the ugly of that relationship and the development of a young professional fighter. It's, it's very hard. First off, I mean, Kay helps out with everything. He's an honor to work with, but it's very hard training with him because it's like it's old school training. You know, we're, we're doing three workouts a day. We're waking up at 4 a.m. We're, you know, going to sleep, getting up and working out again at like noon, working out at 8, 7 p.m. So it, it's very tough. It's very rigorous, but... Um, he, he's amazing to work with, and he's, he's made me get better a ton. I feel like I ask this question a lot of, of young fighters new in their career. I know I've asked it of Richard, and every time you step into the ring, it, it seems as though I'm asking, is this your toughest opponent to date? But Eduardo's a seven-year pro. You're walking now into his backyard to face him on his turf. Clearly, he'll have the crowd behind him. And, you know, everybody wants to give uh, an undefeated fighter their first loss so is this the toughest opponent or your toughest challenge to date it's tough to say who is the toughest opponent because everyone shows up different come fight night so we will see um i don't know if the crowd will be on his side uh i know the way people work they like you when you're winning so if you're doing well then the crowd will cheer for you and that's how people are eduardo i come back to you. Does his last name give you a little extra motivation? It does. It does. Um, however, uh, just like any other fighter, I look at this as just my next fight uh, on my road, you know, to my next fight. You know, um, the Ali last name definitely is a plus, you know, that, that, you know, this is a, you know, fight, 
fight in my life. You know, I, like in boxing, anything could change. You know, it's a matter of one fight. But regardless, uh, it is, uh, you know, it is, it is great. But for me, I take that away from it to make it less uh, pressure on me, you know. Listen, enjoy every moment this weekend to be, uh, be able to walk into a ring in your hometown and have this opportunity. We're all excited to have you on this card, and, and thank you for spending time with us. Sure. Nico, one last uh, question for you before we move on. I read an interview that you did recently where you said, boxing is life. It is now my everything. What's a typical day? week like for you now with that kind of mindset that that quote sounded romantic i don't remember saying that but that's just the way i read it yeah know. no it, it's yeah, when it, it came is, out of your mouth it, it didn't come out like that but when i say it it's very romantic yeah no so i don't know Bo boxing's tough it's it's a love-hate relationship because obviously i love boxing uh it i i see the outcomes of the work i'm putting in so that's great but uh it's very tough it's not it's not fun going through training camp and waking up at four in the morning and it, that kind of stuff is not fun, doing stuff that I hate to do, but it, the fight days make it worth it. And uh, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Richard's smiling over there. He likes the poetic uh, phrase I just Me heard. and Rich are a lot he, in common. He, he, wrote, he wrote it down in his mind. He's gonna put that in his first no, book Rich, of Rich has probably said that before. Just as long as I get credit, brother. Next yeah. Interview, yeah, that's right. Uh, next interview, we'll bring it up. Did you take that inspiration from Mark's uh, poetic phrase? Jose Pedraza, Arnold Barbosa, uh, co-feature here and literally could be a featured fight. It, uh, people talking about it already. Uh, this is, this is going to be an all-out all out brawl. Arnold, 31 years old, nine-year pro, highly ranked in the 140-pound division in 2023. Is this your year? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I hope so. Um, you know, we, we've been training really hard. Um, we have a, a you know, very tough fight in front of us, so uh, we're not looking past this fight. You admitted your last time out you were a little rusty at 11 months in between both fights, and you admitted, you said, hey, probably wasn't my best performance. Uh, what kind of adjustments have you made since then so that that type of mistake or that kind of mindset doesn't happen again? Uh, a lot. You know, we, uh, we went back to the drawing board uh, for this camp. We've see, seen our mistakes, um, you know, so it, uh, what he can capitalize on. So we've just been training hard, man, training hard and, and, and ready to show up. Yeah. Jose, I'm going to come over to you. Good to see you. We got a see. translation over here. 12 years in the game, two division world champion. Does a fight like this throw you back into the conversation for another title shot? Un gusto estar contigo, Jose. 12 años como profesional, campeón en dos divisiones. Una victoria aquí te pondrá en el camino hacia convertirte una vez más en campeón mundial. Claro que sí. Eh, eh, Barbosa es un gran boxeador, un boxeador de la de la élite. Eh, al ganarle, pues, me posicionaría más cerca de, una, de un título mundial. Of course, Barbosa is a great boxer. He's an elite boxer, and if I beat him, it will position me towards a world title opportunity. I mentioned 12 years in the game. What's the best part of this boxing journey for you? Inside the ring, outside the ring, private life, family life. That's an incredible journey. You have a ton of accomplishments. One of my favorite fighters. What's been the best part for you so far? Hemos mencionado que tienes 12 años como profesional, pero en tu opinión, ¿qué es el mejor aspecto de este camino como boxeador? Eh, lo, que, lo que pasa en el ring, fuera del ring, tu vida privada. Eh, ¿Qué es lo más import importante para ti en este camino? Crear fanáticos nuevos, eh, fanáticos internacionales, eh, que donde uno a donde uno va, eh, ese fanático pues, te reconoce y te admira y eso pues, hace ser a uno grande. Y en lo familiar, pues, eh, mi familia pues, él, es todo y siempre que salgo de una pelea, a donde lo primero que voy es con mi familia a compartir. To be able to create new fans, to create international fans, and it's nice that wherever you go, fans recognize you and admire you, and it makes you feel great. And with regard to family, family is everything. When I come out of my fight, the first thing I do is to share time or spend time with my family. Arnold, I want to come over here to you. Uh, you know, similar to what I, I asked Nico every time out, it seems as though the, the, the contest or the challenge is tougher and tougher. Across from you is, is a seasoned professional fighter, two division champion. Uh, biggest biggest test for you of your career? Uh, but, well, no question. Um, you know, 
Uh, we have nothing but respect for Pe for Pedraza and what he's done and who he's fought, the experience he brings, you know, the the, the, the how slick he is, you know, lefty righty, um, you know. So so we we you know we're very looking we're looking forward to this fight. You know, this is gonna be a great fight. You know, I'm looking forward to test myself, um, and it's gonna bring out the best in me. Have you made any adjustments in your game, knowing that you're facing the this opponent? Of course, you know, just started with training camp. You know, we went out to altitude of Big Bear. Um, so we were out there, um, you know, and, and, you know, it started there. You know, my, my father did a great, a great job in putting a plan together, bringing in the sparring partners that we needed, and uh, we're ready to go. Yeah, I wrote down here in my notes, Big Bear sparring. Talk about that a little bit if you can, if you want to get into a little bit more detail, because, you know, camp is everything, camp is life leading up to a fight, and that's a pretty special place to train. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, like uh, Nico said, you know, like you're just literally, you're waking up, you're training, you're sleeping, you're, w you're waking up, training again, eating, going to sleep, same thing. Um, you know, we had some, some great sparring. We had two 18-year-olds in there, you know, so it was kind of like they had all the energy in the world, you know. So, uh, so you know, we're, they, they really helped me, man. One of them being uh, Abdullah Mason, who signed with Top Rank. Yeah. Uh, so that was, man, great work in itself, sharp. Uh, so we're ready to go, man. We're, we're going to be ready for anything. Do you have a switch that you flip? come fight week? Because, you know, I've been a part of these now for five, six years, and I see uh, a lot of fighters from press conference to weigh into fight night become a different person. At what point during fight week do you flip the switch? Oh, man, I think, I think it starts in training camp. Right when I get the news, you know, I flip a switch. You know, and uh, for me, it's a full goal. You know, um, I didn't, you know, uh, I, I'm mean, not the you know, most talented and fastest, strongest, but, you know, with the hard work, I, I came to 27 knowing where I'm at now. Um, you know, so I started from the bottom, you know, from the Uni Maz days, you know what I'm saying? So, so I ain't going to let, you know, nothing get in the way, man. I'm going to keep going until I become world champion. 28-0 no after Friday night? Oh, of course. Jose, one more question for you before I leave. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I've been with Top Rank now for five or six years, and every time you've been sitting on this side of me, this is this A-side, B-side conversation, which we hear a lot about. Uh, does that give you a little extra motivation, knowing that you're sitting on this side of the table? Una vez más estamos contigo, José Pedraza. Yo he trabajado con Top Rank por cinco años y cada vez estás en este lado. Se habla del lado B, A y lado B. ¿Te da más motivación estar en este lado? Definitivamente, ¿a quién no? Eh, yo soy de, la, de las personas o de los boxeadores que siempre está eh, menospreciado, pero eso es un, una motivación para callar bocas. Definitely. Who wouldn't? I'm a, a person or a boxer who's always underestimated. And so that motivates me to shut mouths up. Listen, our co-feature Friday night is going to be one for the ages. You do not want to miss it. Friday night right here in Glendale, Arizona. Now it's on to the big one. The WBO Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Emmanuel Navarrete, Liam Wilson. Uh, WBO Featherweight Champion. You're moving up to take on Mr. Wilson for the vacant WBO Junior Lightweight title. If you win, you're going to have a decision to make. Campeón de la OMB de las 126 libras, vas a subir a enfrentar a Wilson por el vacante título de las 130. Después de esa pelea vas a tener que hacer una decisión, ¿verdad? Así es, pues obviamente primero estamos pensando en salir adelante el viernes. Obviamente Liam Wilson también viene con muchas ganas de llevarse el título mundial y... Creo que pues es, es en lo que me debo enfocar al 100% y después de eso pues ya tomar una decisión pues adecuada, ¿no? Yes, first of all we're looking at making sure we score the victory on Friday. I also know that Wilson comes with a strong desire to win. That's what we're focused on 100% and then after that we'll make an adequate decision. Liam, welcome to the United States. Your first fight here in the United States. Talk about that for a minute. We're going to be on ESPN Friday night. You made the trip over. Uh, thanks for having me. I feel very privileged to be here. Um, you know, thank you, Top Rank, for the opportunity. It's a chance for me to become, uh, you know, to fulfill my dream and become world champion. I've done 17 years of hard work for this for this moment, and I put in a lot of hard work. I've fought whoever they put in front of me, and I'm ready for a Friday night. Listen, your last fight, uh, Matias Rueda. 17 years of hard work for this for this moment, and I put in a lot of hard work. I've fought whoever they put in front of me, and I'm ready for a Friday night. Listen, your last fight, uh, Matias Rueda, unanimous decision. Uh, you became the second fighter only to beat him. Oscar Valdez was the only other fighter to stop him. That's an impressive victory. Uh, you deserve to be sitting here. You deserve this opportunity. What did you take away from that fight 
What did you learn from it? Because that, that was a contest. And now you have this opportunity, like you said, for a world, world title. Yeah, I, I took one hard fight after another. Um, I did that fight with one hand as well. I did half the fight with one hand. I broke it midway, midway through the fight. Um, you know, look, I, it showed my resilience and it proved to, my, to myself, to my country and to the world that, you know, I have what it takes to become world champion and I, just ha I have to be in those fights. 100%. How special would it be for you here to hear the words and new? Everything. Um, you know, this is what me and my team, my promoter, my manager, my trainers have worked for for so many years. We've taken the risks and challenges, and I know on fight night I, I have a tough fight ahead of me. Navarro is a great champion, and, you know, I've worked my ass off for this, and I do plan on giving, giving him the fight of his life. I love it. I'm going to win. I love it. I absolutely love it. Manuel, you've become a star in the sport of boxing over the last couple of years. You can't go anywhere. People know who you are. They recognize you. Uh, how do you stay grounded to continue on this journey? Te has convertido en una estrella en el boxeo. Ya tienes muchos años en este deporte. Todos te conocen, te reconocen. ¿Cómo te mantienes, te mantienes humilde en este camino del boxeo? Pues muchas gracias. Eh, creo que parte importante pues ese desarrollo es, es fundamental en mi esquina, en mi equipo de trabajo. Creo que son personas que pues, traen bien arraigado ese tema. La verdad que son, son personas muy humildes. Mi familia, vengo de familia eh, también muy reservada y humilde. Y creo que eh, más que humildad es una forma de vida para mí más sana. Y pues la, la, la aprecio mucho esa parte y trato de, de, de ser mejor persona pues, cada día al menos. Thank you. It's an important part. And I think in that development, what has been fundamental is my corner, my team, people who have kept me grounded. Um, I come from a humble family. Uh, we're very reserved as well. And more than being grounded or humble, I think it's a way of life. And I appreciate that way of life. And I always try to be a better person. On Friday night, you have the opportunity to become a three-division world champion. You'd be the 10th Mexican fighter to do so. How important is that for you, for your legacy? Este viernes tendrás la oportunidad de convertirte en campeón mundial en tres divisiones. El boxeador mexicano número 10 en hacer ese logro. ¿Qué tan importante sería para tu legado? Es algo, obviamente, pues muy satisfactorio. Creo que el equipo de Vaqueo Navarrete y un servidor estaríamos consumando un logro más en mi carrera eh, de conseguirlo. Obviamente, pues sabremos que no es algo fácil y, y de conseguirlo, pues, Al menos yo personalmente creía que uh, en mi carrera deportiva está hecho uh, algo bueno y estaría tranquilo y pues obviamente satisfecho con lo que he logrado en mis 10 años de boxeo profesional. It will be something very satisfying for Team Navarrete and your servant. Uh, it will be the consummation of a big goal to be able to achieve that. And it's not something easy, not something easy to get. And for me personally, in my career, I feel that I've done a, a very well done career. I'll be satisfied uh, with what I've done in my 10 years as a professional. Thank you, champ. Okay. Liam, one last one for you. You, you mentioned in another interview that you, you might be being overlooked here a little bit. Do you bring the damage, Mr. Damage, on Friday night? Yeah, that's what I do every, every fight I come to fight. And um, I come to bring the pain. I am an underdog, and I can't blame that. You know, he, I'm tw uh, 11 and one. He's 36 and one. The statistics don't lie there, and you know, it's fair play to that. But um, I, I plan on coming to the fight night and causing, a, you know, um, putting a halt to his plans and uh, winning this fight. I have a family to feed and a legacy to live on, and uh, I'm hungry. He's been champion before, twice before actually, and I, you know, I haven't. I'm, I'm coming to this fight very hungry. I'm coming to win. Make no mistake about it. I love it. It's going to be a great night. Listen, on behalf of everybody at Top Rank Boxing ESPN, gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time with us outside of the ring. You guys are all fantastic gentlemen, and uh, I'm honored and privileged to sit with you like this. Uh, best of luck this weekend. And to everybody watching, thank you so much for tuning in. It all goes down Friday, February 3rd, not Saturday. Friday, February 3rd, from right here at the Desert Diamond Arena in beautiful Glendale, Arizona. As always, this is Boxing, this is Top Rank. We'll see you right here tomorrow as we get them on the scale. Have a great afternoon, everybody.
Adonis Creed. You don't remember me, huh? What happened with you two? We was like brothers. I got some unfinished business. Gotta be talking about Dane. I'm coming for everything. You threatening me? Let go of whatever was and walk into what is. Creed 3. Rated PG-13. Only in theaters March 3rd.